Hey, hey, everybody, it's Overkill here once again with a new video. So today, Creative Assembly has released the information, or well, announced, uh, the new expansion for Total War Attila, the Age of Charlemagne. Now, um, this is exciting. Uh, basically, this time period, the late Dark Ages, uh, Viking, beginning of the Viking Age is my favorite time period in history. Um... Although I don't know much about the Frankish time, uh, which is probably the most important part. I know, like, I like I like the whole Norse and um, Saxon and stuff, uh, all that stuff. I don't know much about the uh, actual Frank stuff. So Charlemagne, I know who he is, obviously, um, but I'm not exactly sure of everything that happened at that time. Uh, so I'm really excited because this is going to be a learning experience for me. And, uh, well, of course, I am going to research it. But I just want to uh, quickly say I will be doing a campaign with this. I'm not sure who. Uh, I'll probably hold a poll before it comes out uh, who you guys want to see. But, yeah. Uh, it's coming out in two weeks and two days, I believe. Or one day from the time that you see this, maybe. Might be out by the time you see this. I don't know. But um, they also came out with a trailer. And once we're done talking here, I will show you the trailer and then uh, talk about everything else. So um, we're going to show you the trailer right now. And I'll get back to you when it's done. Sega. There have been many kings before you. Many names. Many titles. Men who rose from nothing. Men who risked all that they love to lead by honor and virtue and inspire the common man. Do you think you're different? Somehow chosen. Who gave you the right to rule? It wasn't the people. It wasn't God. It was you. Alright, so that trailer is absolutely bloody amazing. Um, it, it's one, it, probably the best trailer that I've seen them make. Um, it, it's awesome. It's got me really excited for it. Um, so basically, the, uh, the Age of Charlemagne campaign pack. Alright, let's actually talk about this. Um, so, the Total War Attila Age of Charlemagne campaign pack has a huge new campaign set at the dawn of the Middle Ages. So basically, this is going to be ushering in what we know as the early medieval stage, basically. Uh, medieval 2 starts at 1066. This is going to be taking place in 768 or something like that, or eight, 780 something. 768, that's right. Um, it's saying, enter the medieval era with knights, house carls, and a new illuminated uh, UI art style. Now, that's another thing. We're going to get to this in a little bit, but they've changed the unit cards for this, and I'm very excited. Uh, there's going to be eight playable factions, none of which are announced, of course, other than the Franks. That's pretty obvious. Although, maybe not the Franks, but um, Charlemagne's Frank, like part of the Franks. I'm sure, I'm sure there's going to be uh, uniting different groups and stuff like that. Um, with all new units, tech, and buildings. And new game features with story-based and kingdom events. Now, that's interesting. 
Um, any anytime there's new stuff added to a game, it's awesome. It almost seems like I said this before, and I almost it almost seems like Attila is only was only made to test stuff because every single time they come out with a new expansion or DLC, they have different features added in, and that's awesome. Don't get me wrong, all the games should have stuff like that, but it just seems like they're always testing stuff because they bring out all these new, really different things to Total War. Um, the world lays in tatters, exhausted, bleeding, scarred, and burnt. The people desperate, but eat. Oh, the people desperate, rather. But even after the apocalypse, there are men willing to give everything to return to light, to knowledge, to civilization, whatever the cost and whatever the means. It is the age of a chosen few, an age of greatness, when the first true kings built vast kingdoms from the ashes of past empires. It is the age of Charlemagne. So yeah, uh, there's nice little pictures here on the on the Steam page. That's where I'm reading all this from. Uh, the year is 768 AD, and after the death of his father, Charlemagne is to share the Frankish throne alongside his brother. Okay, so yeah, it's going to be split between you and your brother, alright, if you play as Charlemagne, of course. A situation that ill befits a man of his vision, and their relationship clouds as he feels the fiery blood of his grandfather, Charles Martel, stir in his veins. Charles Martel obviously being a pretty popular, pro popular person in history. Uh, friends, enemies, and opportunity populate a continent... A continent, rather. Oh, continent, what the hell is that? Uh, tired of conflict, the people eager for peace. Charlemagne finds himself at the head of a new age of education, religion, and warfare, and sees all as tools, all as tools to unite, stabilize, and expand. There you go. The Saxons, the Saracens, and the Vikings will all have something to say to a man of such ambition. It will take guile, charge, char wow, charm, intelligence, and ruthlessness to succeed above all others. Charles the Great, King of the Franks, the father of Europe. Will you make your mark in his image, or will you become your own king? That's awesome. That's a nice little description. Um, <laughs> just reading about all this has got me really excited. Now, I'm not I'm not super fond of Attila. Um, although, if you go back and watch my first series, I say it's my favorite game. My opinion has changed since then, um, after playing it for so, uh, so much. But, um... Taking this into the early medieval ages will probably change my opinion on the game because there's some mechanics of the uh, Dark Ages that I don't like quite a, quite that much uh, with the Huns and such and all that crap. Uh, of course, there's probably going to be Hunnic or not Hunnic, but uh, nomadic tribes in this, but it probably won't be so ruinous as base uh, as the base Attila game. So, uh, Age of Charlemagne is an epic expansion for Total War. Attila set in the Middle Ages on its on a sprawling new campaign map of Europe and. I'll put a map, the campaign map here while I'm talking about this. There have been kings and kingdoms before, but this is a time where truly great men united entire nations, built lasting legacies, and defined, defined what it meant to be king. Can you be counted amongst them? You'll face a new age, but an exhausted world, wary of conflict and battle. New technologies and new ways of waging war will only get you so far. A good king is a shroud, ma uh, shrewd, shrewd man. There we go. Who knows precisely how far his people can be pushed. Do not mistake a reluctance to go to war as a sign that a nation is unprepared for it. Europe remains a melting pot of conflicting ideologies and long-held distrust. While the old empire is now a fading memory, the threats and consequences of its passing echo, resonating in the new dangers and pressures for fledgling nations. Opportunity presents itself in tying together vast new kingdoms, powerful new states that can be marshaled under a banner of civilization drawn from ashes. Greatness awaits you if you have the steel and vision of Charlemagne. So th this this thing opportunity presents itself in tying together vast new kingdoms, powerful new states that can be marshaled under a banner. Does this kind of mean that instead of having a com like a complete kingdom, you can have? <clears throat> I guess it could be like a, va a vassalage kind of system. Maybe these people become part of your kingdom, but like not in the sense of like the older games where you know you completely rule like control them like they're your slaves basically uh like these people are part of your kingdom but they're marshaled themselves i'm not sure uh well marshal under a banner that might be interesting that's interesting we'll have to learn more about that as it gets closer um the brand new age of charlemagne campaign map is focused in on europe from the year 768 a.d with 52 conquerable provinces that's pretty good uh that's well on average there's three pro uh, three settlements per province so that's quite a bit that's quite a few different settlements um, it provides a detailed and vibrant geopolitical starting position, offering hundreds of hours of potential gameplay. The user interface is now resplendent in a style inspired by the art of the Middle Ages. Influences ranging from illuminated manuscripts and early stained glass work will lend color and atmosphere to your campaign. And as you can see from the picture of the unit cards, holy shit do they look awesome. Uh, this is amazing. I love this art style, and it's going to make uh, knowing your units really easy. 
Um, no more little sprites on the cards. It's clearly drawn nice um, depictions of what the units would look like as, as stained glass or a painting. And they look absolutely fantastic. Um, there's going to be a diverse selection of playable factions, each one featuring his own faction traits, of course, rosters, uh, challenging conditions, uh, where they can be named a kingdom in their own right. So you're going to be starting off as a faction, and then by, towards the middle and end of the campaign, you're going to be that faction, the kingdom of that faction. So, um, let's say you start off as the Franks, unless you start off as a kingdom with the Franks, I'm not sure. But, um, then you'll become the kingdom of the Franks, or the Frankish kingdom. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, they don't have any released right now. Obviously, the Franks are going to be in it. That's just obvious. But they don't have that confir confirmed right now. But uh, they're going to be releasing those in the next couple of days. Uh, there's new units, of course. Age of Charlemagne includes all new units to better reflect the advancing warfare of the period, characterized by more heavily armed and armored infantry, and an increasing prevalence of cavalry of all categories, especially the emergence of knights in the Norman style for the first time. With over 300 new units, you will have the opportunity to recruit iconic military forces of the period, such as Thens, or Thanes, uh, whatever, Feared Axemen, Skola Knights, Berber Jeanettes, Gaze Hounds, or Gaze Hounds, uh, and the Feared Siax Arm Saxon Warriors. So this is going to be awesome! This is my, like, this style of warfare, um, where they're just starting to get into more armored and better equipped soldiers instead of, uh, rather... You know, people running in naked like barbarians and stuff. Like these are all, these are all becoming civilized nations now, that are just clashing in these early medieval battles. And that's one of my favorite things, uh, favorite time periods in history. Uh, war weariness. The sign of a great true king is in knowing how far your people can be pushed. This is a new mechanic, by the way. Wars are significant and dramatic events between kingdoms, and should not be undertaken lightly. The fewer wars you wage, the better your people will respond. As frequent and drawn out conflict will rapidly damage morale and your army's integrity, a shrewd ruler will seek to bring peace quickly and decisively. There we go. So this is actually something that a lot of people don't like uh, hearing about. The fact that it takes a long time to conquer an Attila anyway because of public order problems while conquering and stuff. So maybe if they can fix that uh, by making public order not so big of a deal when conquering, maybe this will be better, uh, this war weariness, because it makes sense. You don't want to be away from home for years and years on, on after countless battles. So it does make sense. I think it's a cool mechanic, but we'll see how if it breaks the game or makes it. So I am excited to see that. Um, then we get into the unique kingdom and story events. Each playable faction has a unique set of challenging kingdom requirements to meet for the dedicated and shrewd player. They like using shrewd in this, apparently. Um, once achieved, you will be able to declare a new kingdom name for your faction, reflecting or altering history in your wake. So actually, you get to choose your name. All right, that's pretty cool. Uh, in addition, each faction will receive tailored narrative story events, offering you distinct challenges and dilemmas as your campaign unfolds. Historically inspired, some choices will lead you further to that faction's original destiny, or you may choose to carve a new path of your own. And see? They're get, I think they're getting this idea from Warhammer because they're adding in these quest storylines um, that will further advance your faction. And that's what they're that's like one of the main things of what's been advertised for Warhammer. So it does seem like they're trying to see what people think about that kind of stuff. Uh, good move, CA, good move. Uh, Age of Charlemagne features many technologies and buildings that reflect the new period. Significantly, you'll encounter and leverage those that inspire... Uh, the emerging ideas of feudalism and chivalry as your campaign progresses. Many buildings also now give bonuses to adjacent provinces as well as their own. That's nice. All right. Uh, allowing for more specialization within the different geographic areas of your kingdom and chaining combinations of benefits across your lands. In addition, while conflict will always dog you, victory conditions that reward a less military-focused approach are achievable, testing your mettle as both a compassionate and cunning ruler. And there's this picture of different things that's reminding me of Crusader Kings 2. Uh, you have green, red, and blue uh, colored little symbols, and um, I guess I guess that's different things that affect your uh, um, like uh, civil, military, civil for green, military for red, and something um, for blue. Interesting. It, the little symbols look like they're from Crusader Kings too, though, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then finally, agents and skills. You'll find agents more specialized than before, with assassins, spies, and priests or imams. Uh, focused on a more powerful but specific ability set rather than being more useful in all situations. Alright. Alongside your generals, agents will also receive uh, all new skill trees with more variation in the branches avail available to them. This provides greater choices in how you develop and specialize them over time. Finally, the new army and navy legacies will focus on bonuses that reward distinct playstyles. 
Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Um, this is going to be a very interesting, very, very, very interesting campaign. Um, as you can see from all the pictures that we've went through so far, you can see the different... Um, you can see how all the units look different. You have kite shields now, uh, nasal helmets. Everybody wears like pa like co um, padded armor and chainmail and stuff rather than you know the just chainmail coats and stuff. It looks more advanced, um, and that's something that is really exciting. Um, of course, everybody's still using round shields and stuff along with the kite shields. It's still the Dark Ages, like the early Middle Ages. Um, the, the basically going into the Viking Age. Uh, everybody's got, most people are going to be using uh, round shields in the north, and some of the uh, main the mainland European nations are going to be have have kite shields like the P uh, maybe the Normans would the Normans be around at this time? I'm not sure. Again, I don't know much about mainland Europe at this time. I know more about England and uh, the Vikings and such. But yeah, um, I especially don't know. There's pictures of these uh, these. Um, well, they're not Eastern in this, I would imagine, because it only goes down to, uh, to Rome, basically. But um, these Eastern factions that have occupied Spain, um, I, I definitely don't know anything about that. Um, so oh, that's something I'm going to have to look up as well, is the uh, the caliphates in Spain at this time. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a really exciting looking campaign, and uh, I hope you guys are all excited. Um, this seems to be like one of the only videos that uh, CA didn't get much hate on for uh, Warhammer, so I guess it kind of beat that back because every single video that CA has put out is uh, being hated on recently because of the Warhammer stuff. But we won't talk about that. That's not what this video is for. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to play it, uh, which is surprising because I haven't really been excited to play a campaign in Attila for a while now. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys are excited. Um, be sure to leave down your thoughts below. And yeah, this has been Overkill as always, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.